All right, 6.3 graphing quadratics using the x-intercepts. So we're going to be graphing. When an equation is in the factored form, you can use the x-intercepts to graph and to find the vertex. And when we know this, we can actually graph our function. Find, let's do the first example by finding the x-intercepts, vertex, and we're going to graph the parabola. So here's our first equation. y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. What we're going to do here is find the x-intercepts by factoring, so x plus 7 times x plus 1. That means our x-intercepts are negative 7 and negative 1, which means that negative 7, 0 is one of the points, and negative 1, 0 is the other point. Our vertex you will find by taking the axis of symmetry, by adding up the x's and dividing by 2, which gives us negative 4. We sub in the x equals negative 4 into the equation, and we get our y value of negative 9. What does that mean? Our vertex is going to be negative 4, negative 9. So these are the coordinates we've determined. Negative 7, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 4, 9, and finally there's one more point that we can figure out from the equation. Let's see if you can figure it out. That's right, it's the y-intercept, and that's going to be 0, 7. Now that gives us four points. Once we graph it, we'll be able to figure out our fifth point. But at this point in time, that's enough that we can use to graph. We're not going to graph it just yet because we're going to go to the next problem, part B. But note that we will come back to the graph in just a little bit. So part B, we have the equation y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 9, and we find the values. So y equals negative, common factor out the negative, then we factor the expression, and that gives us y equals negative x minus 3 all squared. Well, so if you look carefully, this actually gives us two parts. It gives us the x-intercept of 3, and there's only one x-intercept. Now remember, we talked earlier in a previous lesson that when you have one x-intercept, that means that is also, that's right, the vertex. So 3, 0 turns out to be our x-intercept and our y-intercept, uh, sorry, and our vertex as well. So we need five points essentially to find the value that we need to be able to graph it. We know what the vertex is, so the vertex is going to be 3, 0. That's what we're going to put here. But we need the numbers before the vertex and after the vertex. And because the y-intercept is close, we could even use that. We don't need to use that, but we use numbers before and after the vertex. All right, here goes. All right, so we need the points before and after our vertex. So when we plug in, well, we know this is our vertex. We know the y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 9. So what do we do with these other numbers? Well, I know in the past we've done the graphing by transformations. Another way is to plug in these numbers. These are before and after the vertex. Plug in these numbers in, excuse me, into the equation. And this is the values that we get. 1, negative 4. 2, negative 1. Now remember, when I plug in 1, I plug in 1 into here, I get negative 4. I plug in 2 into here, and I get negative 1. These are the values before the vertex. Remember that on the other side, there are mirror images of that vertex. On the other side of the vertex, there are mirror images of the numbers before. So 4 is after the vertex, just like 2 is just before the vertex. So 4 is after, 2 is before, so these two will share the same y value. And that will be negative 1. That means that from the vertex to before, 
will match the number with two after. So that means five will have a y value of negative four. So we're gonna look at the graphs so that we can make sense of this. Looking at graph A. From graph A, this is the graph that we want, folks. Okay, so we want this scale. We want to see a nice big graph. Unless you're already given the graph with the scale, you want to be able to draw a nice big graph. When you draw that graph, you want to write the coordinates. So there's the first one. Negative 1, 0. Negative 7, 0. 4, negative 9. 0, 7. Okay? So here we go. 0, 7 is here. So this point will have a matching point on the other side, way over here. And this is at the number 8. So at 8, 7 and 0, 7, they will have the same y values. These will have the same y values, and this is your vertex point. Draw your graph in a smooth, rounded curve. Don't forget the arrows. And that, folks, is the equation of the parabola for part A. There's your parabola. Let's look at part B. Again, you need a specific grid, okay, with the specific scale. Here it is. And once we have this scale, we want to graph this function, part B. Starting with the y-intercept, we had 0, negative 9. Then we had 1, negative 4. Then we had 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, negative 1, 5, negative 4, and finally 6, negative 9. Why 6, negative 9? Well, think about it. This point has a mirror image all the way on the other side, and there it is. So we can figure out the mirror image points. If we know one point and we know where the vertex is, the axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that we use as a mirror to find the matching point on the other side. Draw our parabola. There we go. Extend it. Draw some arrows. And don't forget the equation, folks. So here's our equation. All right, moving forwards, let's look at another question. Example number two asks you to find the equation in standard form of a parabola that has zeros at 2, negative 4, and has a y-intercept of 16. So I'm giving you the zeros, and I'm giving you another point, the y-intercept. We can use this information to find a, an, a, an equation, so one single equation, and then we can move that equation from whatever form it's in to standard form. So what form are we going to use? Well, hopefully you're thinking, oh yeah, we probably should use factored form. And that's what we're going to do. Sub in r for 2, s for negative 4, and the y-intercept 0, 16 for x and y into the equation y equals a x minus r times x minus s. And we plug in the values. So y is 16 is equal to a 0 minus 2, 0 minus, minus 4, which is 0 plus 4. And we're going to find the value of a. So it will equal negative 8a will equal 16, and that will give us a value of negative 2. So our equation in factored form will be negative 2, x minus 2, times x plus 4, and then once you expand it, and then you're going to expand it again, so we expand the double set of brackets, then move the negative 2 inside, this is what we get for the standard form. So the standard form equation is going to be y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 16 as our final statement. Okay, moving forwards on to something else. Here we go. Example number three. An equation h equals negative d squared plus 16 models an arch where h is the height in meters above the ground and d is the horizontal distance from the center of the arch part a 
How wide and tall is the arch? Okay, to understand this question, we kind of need a little bit of a drawing. We need to find the zeros because we need to know how wide that arch is. We need to know where it hits the ground so we can determine the width. We know that the height is going to be at 16 because the equation says it's from the center. So that means the y-intercept is at the height, maximum height of the center. So we need to find the zeros. So we set the height equal to zero. We factor the equation and we get the factors here. And our d values will be 4 and negative 4, positive 4 and negative 4. So now we have to determine the width of this arch. Well, it goes from negative 4 all the way up to 4, means that the width of this entire arch is actually 8 meters wide and 16 meters tall. And that we were able to determine from the equation and the way it described what the equation represented. All right, now part B asks the following question. For what values of D is the relation valid? Now we need to know, is negative values valid? Well, the only time negative values are valid is if we're talking about the negative distance. So in here, the negative distance that they're talking about is let's say moving left versus moving right from the center. So left of the center is minus four, right to the center is plus four, and that's where it hits the ground. So those are the only d values. If I want to go bigger than negative four, what happens is our now our height is going to be a negative value. And again on this side, the height is going to be a negative value. So the d values can only be between the two values of negative four and positive four. So you can write that mathematically, and that's the statement mathematically, folks, or you can write it in words. D can only be between negative four and four because these values will have a height that is greater than or equal to zero. All right, one more. Part C. If the arch is to be used at an entrance gate and 2.5 meters width is required per lineup, how many lineups can there be? So the idea is 2.5 meters width is required per lineup. How many lineups can, uh, can there be? Well, think about it. You have the arch width, and if you divide that by the lineup width, that should give us how many lineups we can have. Eight meters divided by 2.5 meters will give us 3.2. You can't have 0.2 of a lineup, so there can only be a total of three lineups altogether. All right, well, that's the end of this piece here. Um, just make sure that when you look at the word problems, you read them carefully. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a numerical day. Take care.